experiment to determine the resultant force of three nonlinear forces. Uh, we're gonna use a force board, mass pieces, gut of string, uh, ruler, and a protractor, and then grapple. Okay, so now the first thing is to set up the board. Okay guys, so now we're gonna paste uh, the graph paper onto the board so that matches with one of the lines. So now we're gonna take a marker and mark point zero, which is this one. And we're gonna put a dot on each of the string marks. Okay, also very important, uh, the mass pieces are in grams, which should be converted to kilograms, so we can calculate the weight, which will be tension of the string. Okay, so now we're gonna take the paper and connect the dots, and we will analyze the results. Well, hello guys, here Mr. G. We are going to see now the result of the learner. Now, this is the scan of the learner's paper that he marked. You can see here was where the dot or the, of the string were connected. Now, just for you to understand what is happening, this string was coming all the way through here and eventually they will go down with a mess here of 20 grams. Now, 20 grams, you cannot work in grams. We have to work in kilograms and this one will be 0, 0,02 kilograms, all right? So I hope that is understood, okay? Now, this string was also coming all the way here through this point and go all the way down to another 0, or 20 grams, 20 grams, which when you convert it, 0, 0,02 kilograms okay and this one was all the way down through this point here with another mass piece of 30 grams in this case and when you convert it will be 0, 0,03 kilograms you remember you have to divide by a thousand okay now i want you to note the form we're going to call this one t1 it doesn't really matter the names you give them this one is going to be t2 and the one down we're going to call it T3. Here down here will be T3. Okay. Now I want you to notice the following here, guys. This this system was at equilibrium. It was not moving. So the weight on this specific object here, which we are going to call W1, is equal to mg, and you know that, that is the definition of weight. But because the system is at equilibrium, that weight will be equal in magnitude to this tension here, we're going to call T1, and therefore that tension is right here. This, guys, is T1, 
which in other words is equal to a W1 and the 4 is equal to M1G. All right, now for this question, for this work here, I want you to notice something. For this work, G is going to be approximately 10 meters per second square. We're going to work with 10 rather than 9,8. Why is that so? Because I want to do the scaling as accurate as I can. And if I multiply by 9,8, it's going to give me numbers with commas that is going to be a little bit difficult for the scaling. So for this work, and only for this work, gravity or acceleration due to gravity is going to be 10. So when you substitute here for T1, you will get that is 0, 0,02 multiplied by a 10 and that will give you that will give you that t1 is equal to 0, 0,2 newton all right so the t1 is going to be equal to 0, 0,2 newtons and t2 guys because it's the same drawing it is the same mass will also be 0, 0,2 newton there but the difference is that it's going to be pointing in that direction okay now for t3 you have to do exactly the same it will be equal to m3 g and this will be equal this is m3 this is equal to 0 comma 0 3 multiplied by 10 remember we're using 10 just to make the uh, the scaling later on easier so this one is going to be equal to 0 comma 3 newton so now we have in the three forces which i am going to write here on this side so we have the t1 is equal to 0 comma 2 newton we have the t2 is equal to 0 comma 2 newton and we have the t3 is equal to 0 comma 3 newton all right now what we don't have and we need to get is the direction of those specific vectors there so to do that we're going to redraw it again a little bit more clear all right so here we are but now what we are going to do is to get the direction now to get the direction guys you do need to use a protector and you need to use a ruler fortunately for me my ruler does act as a protector so i don't have to use both of them but for this one we are going to draw here like the axis you can see this one is the x axis and all i have to do here is to join the point so i can get the uh, direction we use green 41 so we're going to keep the green there so if i use my ruler and in your case you have to use the ruler first and then the protector you can get that this is a t1 and here it will give you the direction which is a 45 degree there this is 45 degrees remember all we're doing is getting the direction because the magnitudes are here so t1 will be 0 comma 2 at 45 degree and all of them is to the positive x axis so same if you go to t2 which is this one here this one there you can see it's 48 degree so if you draw this line here with your protector you can get 48 degree like me this angle here is 48 degrees guys so that's it for now here is 48 at let's write the at 48 degrees and then the last one is straightforward all the way 90 degree down all the way to the point d here all the way down from the starting to there and this one you can see the angle is a 90 degree you don't have to write that angle this one is t3 okay so this is now we have the magnitudes and we have the direction so we're going to add these vectors graphically that is the main purpose of this work with all the data we have now to do this one the first thing we're going to do is to draw a cartesian plane guys but before that one you need an scale and according to the magnitude we have on this side here you can see the best the best um, a scale you can use is 0, 0,1 newton 
but it doesn't need to be like that. You can use any scale. We're going to say that 0 0,1 Newton is going to be equivalent to one centimeters. But if you think it's going to be too small, then you can make the scale a little bit larger, okay? So that is not a big problem here. The scaling shall not be the problem there. So we are going to come here and we are going to draw the axis. But this axis is very small. I don't have to draw a big axis because all I need is to get the direction. Okay, so this is my axis, and if I come here, then I get the y axis. Now, I need to draw a vector who is 0, 0,2 Newton at 45 degrees, guys. 0, 0,2 Newton, that means that it's going to be 2 centimeters at 45 degrees. So you make sure you get the angle, and then you go to the scaling. So here, starting from there, I need 2 centimeters, okay? So we're going to draw from there. Uh, this must be as accurate as you can, otherwise the result may not be exactly the same, but it's going to be very close. So we are going to start from there, there is one centimeter and there is two centimeters. Make sure you draw this one exactly accurate and be careful now with the head. The head must go from there all the way back, otherwise you're making the vector longer. And this is T1, which is equal to 0, to Newton. Now, then right on the head of that vector, you are going to draw another axis, but it's going to be also a small, tiny axis, because all I want is to get the angle. So that is the purpose of those axes there. All right, so I'm going to draw here on the head of this vector, another axis, and it's going to be also kind of small axis, because all I care here is about getting the correct, the correct direction, all right? So here is the axis, and then from there, starting from there, I'm going to draw the other vector, which is at 48 degree. So it must be 48 degree, also, um, also 0, 0,2 Newton, which is two centimeters. So in this direction here, as you can see there, there is another two centimeters all the way there. So it's one and two centimeters. Make sure you having Two centimeters guys and this here is going to be starting from there be careful with the head this is t2 which is equal to 0, 0,2 newtons and then the final vector will be that you don't have to draw the axis but if you want you can get the axis and you can see lovely it is going to be two centimeters three centimeters one two and three centimeters all the way straight down there as you can see so it was actually quite accurate guys they're a little bit longer because of the accuracy of the ruler all right so this is the resultant not the resultant this is t3 now from here what can you actually see and now i'm going to enlarge it so you can see here the result it is a close vector diagram guys what does it mean it means that the f net is equal to zero which was the aim of the experiment so now we can see that these three vectors at equilibrium end up in a close system or close triangle there is the drawing this is the paper of the line it's not my paper there is the drawing of how was the experiment done there is the scaling and here is the adding if you use it with a paper it may be even more accurate please try to do with a paper as accurate as you can but i hope it helped i hope that you enjoy it i hope that you understand and um, thank you for watching thumb up write comments i'll see you next time mr g here